Okay. So, the oscillating glass was an example of the electrical polarization process between the positive and the negative electrode of the injector. During the development of the spark plug, no one has ever shown the compressional wave zone or proven it. That's because you're the first one to actually do something with what you made. $8,900 later, one stupid video is all we get. And months, almost a year's work. This free energy is not cheap. You're gonna make everybody in the world one for free, right? That's what they want. <laughs> I got one for free. Yes, you did, because I love you, Max. <laughs> Before I show the video of the compressional wave with 125 psi, exactly what Stan had suggested in his documentation, I did a 3D rendering of it because I had done the experiment first and then I decided to show it in visual form. Let's talk about the structure of the injector just for a second, since we kind of have an understanding now. Water mixture gas through the water inlet housing. Check valve, by the way, I will tell you, in bar, actually no, in PSI, I'll give you PSI. Max flow that I've got through this is 125, because that's as best my regulator can do. The check valve stops water flow at 74 PSI with the spring that we put in. You can modulate that pressure to break through at different PSIs with different springs. We know the quenching disc. Peter Crump talked about the quenching disc that he used to stop the anti-flashback, right, the flashback arrester. Proven. You have a quenching disc in that box beside it, the white box. Ceramic <laughs> this is the injector, people. The injector is where all the technology of Stan Meyer's 50 plus patents or whatever comes together into one singularity. If you just look at the structure, you begin to get a picture. High voltage, 40,000 to 60,000 kilovolts, or kilovolts, I should say. Compressional wave, ramping up the priming of the inside of the subatomic particles. Destabilize and ionizing the water molecule. Into hydrogen oxygen gases that can be detonated. Thermal gas ignition. So we have instantaneously, we have multiple things occurring down this channel. Voltage disassociation of water, energy priming the subatomic particles, increased energy into the subatomic particles to release even more energy yield. He said, Stan said that you can vector the heat and thermal explosive energy of water to anything you want. Well, where's my spark to, for this thermal gas ignition? You don't need a spark, and I'll tell you why. How much energy do you need to start a thermal nuclear device? About that much. Uranium-235 and a neutron, that's all you need. Thermal gas ignition comes from the destabilization of the gases and they hit each other in a compressional wave zone, zero point energy released, thermal explosive energy, over unity. Okay, is it making sense? Yes. Yes. Do you see again? It's right there. Are you talking about thermal energy, heat of compression? I'm talking about energies and heats hotter than the sun. I'm talking about pistol shrimp. Oh. Were you listening, Chuck? Uh-huh. <laughs> Love you. 
No, wait a minute. There's no spark on the spark plug. Affirmative. So what's the, the ignition coil do? The ignition coil sends a high pulse frequency into the positive probe. And the water molecule and the prime ionized gases do the work. That's crazy. Poppycock. <laughs> it's real physics, as Maximo would say. You gotta have the accent. You have to say it with the accent. I can't do that. <laughs> I'm from Washington. I can't do that. So that's crazy talk. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna show you a video too of the whole thing. So this is the Sam Myers kit in 3D form for the first time. You can find this all over the internet now. You're welcome. <laughs> the hardwood fuel cell tank. It's polyurethane or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, whatever. One of the polys. Yeah, it's one of those dang polys. Doesn't oxidize. You have the water tank. It gets fed into the solenoid. This is the mixing chamber. Why are there three? That's great. Why would you want to do that? I would stand to do that. Well, that's true, actually. Wait a minute. What's this line doing? Exhaust cooler? Are we using E R or E G R? Exhaust gas recirculation? Why would Why would we do that? That's crazy. Wait. Is that going into the mixing chamber? It is. Hey, McCain. Not to interrupt you, but you have something at your foot that's kind of interesting. Other Other side. My foot on this side, on the ground. Oh, the in front of the podium. It looks just like it. Oh shit! How that? Because you're a hillbilly and you have nothing better to do. <laughs> Mixing chamber. Water. Exhaust gases. What's this? That's the gas processor. What did I tell you about? 660 nanometers of light energy on the atomic structure. It, what does it do? It destabilizes it. You use the electrical polarization process inside the gas processor to consume electrons from the oxygen molecules in the air, AKA tickling space state matter. Hey, on, on, in that box, there's like $300 worth of Radio Shack Red. They don't make them anymore. Yeah. I paid a small fortune for them. Max? Shh. Sorry. Dude. <laughs> so, ionized oxygen into the mixing chamber. Hmm. Okay. It goes to the constant displacement pump, which pumps 125 psi into what? Wait a minute, there's four injectors and there's four solenoids. Hmm. What's that? What's this thing? What's that say? VIC circuit inductor bobbins. This is where we get our high voltage to the positive probe. And it's all joined together to replace your spark plug on your car or truck or diesel engine, spacecraft, jet engine. Oh my, oh my god, what's this? This is the schematics of Stan Meyer. Water, gate valve, mixing chamber, gas processor, exhaust gas regulator, constant displacement check valve, solenoids, injectors into your car. Thermal explosive energy. Is this starting to make sense? Now, here is the number one thing he had to figure out. Actually, he had to figure out a lot of things, but this is really important. Hydrogen burns at 325 centimeters a second way too fast, 5,000 degrees. 
way too fast for my internal combustion engine. What's my internal combustion engine rated for burn rate wise? 42 centimeters a second. Why does it only burn at 42 centimeters a second? Because it's a hydrocarbon. When you run your car, you're running off of hydrogen. The hydrogen slowed down by the carbon inside hitting the reaction. Methane, propane, they all have different rates. Okay. Hydrogen has 325. So how do we retrofit this into our cars? We EGR, ex exhaust gas recirculation, into the combustion stroke to retard and slow the combustion of hydrogen with non-combustible gases like nitrogen, oxygen, helium, and all the others. Stan said that the internal combustion engine is a is three unit. It's a air pump, it's a drive machine, and it creates non-combustible gases. We can use all those to our